What was it in you, O theft of mine, that I, poor wretch, doted on, you deed of darkness, in that sixteenth year of my age? Beautiful you were not, for you were a theft. But are you anything at all, so that I could analyze the case with you? Those pears that we stole were fair to the sight, because they were thy creation. O beauty beyond compare, O creator of all, O thou good God, God the highest good, and my true good. Those pears were truly pleasant to the sight, but it was not for them that my miserable soul lusted, for I had an abundance of better pears. I stole those simply that I might steal, for having stolen them, I threw them away. My sole gratification in them was my own sin, which I was pleased to enjoy, for if any one of those pears entered my mouth, the only good flavor it had was my sin in eating it. And now, O Lord my God, I ask what it was in that theft of mine that caused me such delight. For behold, it had no beauty of its own, certainly not the source of beauty that exists in justice and wisdom, nor such as is in the mind, memory senses, and the animal life of man, nor yet the kind that is the glory and beauty of the stars in their courses, nor the beauty of the earth, nor the sea teeming with spawn in life, replacing in birth that which dies and decays. Indeed, it did not have that false and shadowy beauty which attends the deceptions of vice. For thus we see pride wearing the mask of high-spiritedness, although only thou, O God, art high above all. Ambition seeks honour and glory, whereas only thou shouldst be honours above all and glorified for ever. The powerful man seeks to be feared because of his cruelty, but who ought really to be feared but God only? What can be forced away or withdrawn out of his power? When or where or whither or by whom? The enticements of the wanton claim the name of love, and yet nothing is more enticing than thy love, nor is anything loved more healthfully than thy truth, bright and beautiful above all. Curiosity prompts a desire for knowledge whereas it is only thou who knowest all things supremely. Indeed, ignorance and foolishness themselves go masked under the names of simplicity and innocence. Yet there is no being that has true simplicity like thine, and none is innocent as thou art. Thus, it is that by a sinner's own deeds he is himself harmed. Human sloth pretends to long for rest, but what sure rest is there, save in the Lord? Luxury would vain be called plenty and abundance, but thou art the fullness and unfailing abundance of unfading joy. Prodigality presents a show of liberality, but thou art the most lavish giver of all good things. Covetousness desires to possess much, but thou art already the possessor of all things. Envy contends that its aim is for excellence. But what is so excellent as thou? Anger seeks revenge. But who avenges more justly than thou? Fear recalls at the unfamiliar and the sudden changes which threaten things beloved and is wary for its own security. But what can happen that is unfamiliar or sudden to thee? Or who can deprive thee of what thou lovest? Where, really? is their unshaken security, save with thee. Grief languishes for things lost in which desire had taken delight, because it wills to have nothing taken from it, just as nothing can be taken from thee. Thus the soul commits fornication when she is turned from thee, and seeks apart from thee what she cannot find pure and untainted until she returns to thee. All things thus imitate thee, but pervertedly, when they separate themselves far from thee and raise themselves up against thee. But even in this act of perverse imitation they acknowledge thee to be creator of all nature 
and recognize that there is no place whither they can altogether separate themselves from thee. What was it then that I loved in that theft? And wherein was I imitating my Lord, even in a corrupt and perverted way? Did I wish, if only by gesture, to rebel against thy law, even though I had no power to do so actually, so that, even as a captive, I might produce a sort of counterfeit liberty, by doing with impunity deeds that were forbidden in a deluded sense of omnipotence? Behold this servant of thine, fleeing from his Lord and following a shadow. O rottenness! O monstrousness of life and abyss of death! Could I find pleasure only in what was unlawful, and only because it was unlawful? 